Hello everyone, we are Will and Alex, and today we're in Annapolis, Maryland, recreating some photos from our 1950s travel book. We're starting off at the U.S. Naval Academy. Anyone can enter the grounds with a valid real ID, and the visitor center is located right inside gate one. The visitor center offers guided tours, a rotating exhibit, and a gift shop. Someone could also point you in the direction of the U.S. Naval Academy Museum located in Preble Hall. We were headed to retake this photo, which reads, Tecumseh is revered by midshipmen at United States Naval Academy, Annapolis. If you look at Google Maps and at an article written by the Naval Academy's Public Affairs Office, the statue is now labeled as the Tamanend Statue. According to the Naval Academy's website, the statue was originally a wooden figurehead salvaged from a ship that was sunk in Norfolk during the Civil War to prevent her from falling into Confederate hands. The figurehead was meant to portray Tamanend, a 17th century Indian chief of the Turtle Clan of the Lanai Lenape Nation in the Delaware Valley. He is popular for signing a peace treaty with William Penn and is called the Patron Saint of America. Allegedly, when the figurehead was brought to the Naval Academy, there was no indication of who it might portray, so the midshipman nicknamed him Tecumseh. Tecumseh being another Native American chief from the Shawnee tribe in the Midwest, who was a warrior and an orator who promoted the resistance to the expansion of the U.S. into Native American lands. When the deteriorating wooden figurehead was cast in bronze and replaced in 1891, they knew it was Tamanend, but the name Tecumseh stuck for over 100 years until recently. Today, the name has been officially solidified on Google Maps as Tamanend. Next up, we made our way to recreate this photo, which reads, Academy Chapel has crypt containing tomb of daring hero, John Paul Jones. John Paul Jones is credited as the father of the American Navy and was the first well-known naval commander in the Revolutionary War. The story about how his body ended up in this chapel is pretty interesting. In 1792, John Paul Jones died in Paris at the age of 45 en route to Algiers. He was buried in a cemetery belonging to the French royal family. Four years later, the property was sold and the cemetery forgotten. In 1905, and after six years of searching himself, the U.S. Ambassador to France, General Horace Porter, discovered the cemetery and had five coffins exhumed until they found the body that could be identified as Jones. In 1906, his coffin was installed at Bancroft Hall, followed by a speech given by the President Theodore Roosevelt. Several years later, in 1913, his remains were reinterred in a bronze and marble sarcophagus that is now what you can see today in the Naval Academy Chapel. When we went there, they were just starting their 5 p.m. service, so I had my brother snag this photo afterwards. It's time to exit the Academy grounds and see what else there is in Annapolis. Our next photo tree take is this one, which reads, Annapolitans, Annapolitans? Model fashions of ancestors at historic Hammond Harwood House. The Hammond Harwood House was easy enough to find, but unfortunately, no historically dressed ladies were waiting for us outside. The house was built in 1774, and in 1940, the Hammond Harwood House was purchased by the newly formed Hammond Harmon House Association. According to the website, the museum collection of fine and decorative art, the exemplary architecture, the social history of the inhabitants enslaved and free are presented through tours and programs open to the public. 60 minute house tours are conducted April through January and cost $12 per adult. The exhibitions and gardens are always free to visit. 
heading right down the street, we quickly spotted the next photo we had to retake. It reads, the third state house to be built on the same site in Annapolis. This one dates back to 1772. It is the oldest state capital in America still in daily use and the only one in which the Congress of the United States has convened. All of this is still true to this day, and I also learned that this is the location where George Washington came before Congress to resign as Commander-in-Chief, and the Treaty of Paris was ratified, thus officially ending the Revolutionary War. Anyone can visit the State House with a valid ID every day from 8.30 to 5 p.m. There is self-guided tour information in the archives room on the first floor. When we visited, the dome was getting a little facelift, a small part of a larger $34 million plan to restore and preserve the building. From there, we made our way to Annapolis's beautiful waterfront. We ate dinner at Pusser's Caribbean Grill, but there are lots of great eateries to choose from. I'll leave a link below to some great Annapolis blogs and Instagram pages, but some of the recommendations I received are as follows. For food, we have the Iron Rooster, the Federal House, and Fox's Den. For ice cream, I believe it was a toss-up between Storm Bros or Annapolis ice cream. For bars, I can recommend Stan and Joe's Saloon, Pusser's, or Game Time Arcade Bar. Thank you all so much for watching and let me know your Annapolis recommendations in the comments. Please consider subscribing to support our channel and follow along as we recreate all 2000 pictures from our Around the World and 2000 Pictures book. Till next time, bye!